All right, let's get started with another Cabral house call. Today, I'm answering your questions on a motivation and mindset Monday. We just finished up our right way and wrong ways to meditate and kind of demystifying the whole process. Really got into that episode, didn't know how much I would actually be sharing about my own meditation practice and how I do it and where I learned, but it was a lot of fun for me. And again, I start with a topic and I never really know where it's going. I did give a lot of tips on that, some of the benefits and how you can get into it with just five minutes per day. Definitely tune into that one if you do get the moment to be able to fit that in. All right, so let's get into our first question today. First question today is from Marilyn. Marilyn is asking, hair testing, is it accurate with long hair? So really good question. Um, Today we have questions, everything from functional medicine, I believe, to weight loss, and then to uh, back to mindset and calming the body. So really, really diverse group of questions today. So Marilyn, let's get into yours. So we do a ton of hair tissue mineral analysis in my practice maybe the most uh, really in in the, at least the Northeast. I know that just from the lab because we do so much consulting with other health practitioners as well and helping them read those labs. But what I would say is this, since we've really looked into this and studied it in depth, I can tell you that long hair using like a full strand of hair tissue is not what you want to be using. So just to step back a minute for those who don't know, hair tissue mineral analysis is taking a snip of hair, a couple snips if you have short hair, and you're essentially sent it to a, a lab. We only recommend a couple of labs because the rest wash the hair, they don't treat it properly. And that's why sometimes there are inaccuracies with other labs, of course. So we do double blind tests um, ourselves, which means the lab doesn't know it, but we send in two samples on the same exact day from the same exact person, and we make sure we get the same exact reading. So believe me, we do our homework to make sure all of these labs are keeping up with their quality control. And uh, that's why I I feel very confident about using the labs that we do. Hair tissue is also one of the most inexpensive ways to get started, which is excellent as well. And it looks at all of the different uh, minerals that we're excreting through the hair that we need in terms of looking at the macro vision of how we're doing in terms of stress and detox and all of the other different digestive absorption um, based issues. So the reason why you don't want to use long hair is because your hair grows out at about a half an inch or so per month. So for us, we only want to look at one half inch to maybe one, one and a half inches of hair. Typically, we just do a half an inch to one inch total. That's going to give us the last couple months of excretion basically through the hair. And that's what we want to see. We want to see how your body's functioning, what the body's releasing, because basically hair's a protein, so we're doing a little biopsy there. And all the lab does is they burn it, they incinerate it, and they look at the mineral content just like you would any other food. It's not like this complicated or again, like woo-woo type science. It's very straightforward, very simple. They use it for drug testing. They use it for so many different things. And, and we love it in our practice. Again, it's you have to do separate certifications from it. It's kind of a long study process because it's not very straightforward, but amazing, amazing results. So please do not use long hair. Just use a half an inch to one inch when you are testing your hair tissue mineral analysis for best results. Hopefully that helps. Okay. Jenny C is up next. Oh, one thing, Marilyn, we got three questions from you this week, and I am absolutely going to answer all of them. Stay tuned uh, for the rest of this week's episodes to tune in for the rest of your answers as well. Try to line them up with the proper topic. All right, Jenny C is up next. Jenny asks, should I begin to eat cleanly before doing a detox or weight loss plan? So this is a good question. And the reason is this, a lot of people before they come to see a personal trainer, like at one of our studios, or before they do our seven day detox or 14 or 21 day, or before they do our fat loss plan, they're like, no, first I have to get myself in shape first. And I always kind of like smile or laugh at that a little bit because I understand the logic behind that. I do understand that people want to try it a little bit on their own, kind of get their own weight loss and they say, okay, I'm going to fine tune it then by going to a personal trainer, nutritionist, health practitioner, functional medicine doctor, whatever it might be. And I totally understand that. And, and and I like it, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. And if you can do that, then more power to you. And, and that's absolutely fantastic. Do a little bit on your own first. But what I found is this, is that a lot of people without that system or without that accountability partner or without a proven plan, which means not just any plan, but without a proven plan that they know is going to work, It could just lead to more frustration because like you're putting in the work, you're putting in the effort, but then you're not getting the results that you want. And then willpower starts to wane. And then all of a sudden you're just kind of back where you were frustrated, aggravated with your results and kind of given up. So what I would say is 
yeah, if you want to do a couple weeks on your own, absolutely dig in, get right to it. But just to be honest, over the last 20 years from working on in this amazing industry in the health and fitness industry is just knowing that if you were going to do it, again, this is no offense, if you're going to do it, you probably would have done it by now because there's never that perfect time. I've talked about it before. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, again, I have my own coaches. Like when I need to learn something new, I go right to a coach only because, or a system, I want to shortcut my results. I don't want to spend months and months learning something. It's just, I don't have that type of time. And to be honest, I don't know too many people who do. Everyone's busy. That's just the way it is. So what I would say is I would dig right into a proven plan whether it's something like our fat loss and nutrition plan, the seven day detox, which you're guaranteed our mind specifically to lose five to 10 pounds, working with a great personal trainer or nutritionist or someone like that in your city or town, using a specific book or plan that your friends have used and that you might want to try as well. You know, any of those things, just start with a plan. I guess that's my bottom line is start with a plan, start with something that's been shown to work. And if you do that, I think you're on the right track and then do simply what you feel you're going to be able to fully commit to, right? Because that's what it's all about. Yes, get into that first week, two weeks, three weeks, but then how do you then maintain those results? And that's why it's important to obviously have a proven system or plan or coach or whatever works for you. All right. Hopefully that works, uh, Jenny. And Jason M. asks, I have trouble calming my mind down at night. Can you suggest one or two things to do? All right. So really great. There are literally a dozen great things you could do. I believe I wrote uh, a free report on this. Uh, Actually, it was about how to sleep like a baby, you know, get that great night's sleep. Just because probably I would say 33%, a third of the people in my practice have a very difficult time winding down at night. They suffer from insomnia and they can't get the quality sleep that they need. So Jason, let's talk about just one or two things, right? A couple great takeaways. One of the reasons why people have trouble calming their mind down is because they can't make the switch from that work-based or kid-based, whatever it might be during the day, to then switching over to the nighttime, to the relaxation. So basically going from the fight or flight stress response to the rest and relax parasympathetic nervous system calming response. So let's just talk about a few things. In the last podcast, we talked about meditation. Absolutely phenomenal. If you could try a five-minute meditation where you're simply focused on your breathing, please do try that. If you're not ready for that, then I recommend just simple stretching. I recommend stretching your hamstrings, stretching your hip flexors, sitting cross-legged, and just stretching out your hips while breathing at the same time. You can do this just watching t- while watching TV. Of course, non-stimulating TV, but you could do that while watching TV as well. Really, really helpful. Now, before you do this stretching or relaxation breathing, please go over to your you know, kitchen counter, have a little note card, and just put your to-do list for everything that you have to do that next day. Get everything that's on your mind and just literally dump it down onto that piece of paper. And if anything comes back to you, get back up, put it on that piece of paper, write everything down. This is a huge takeaway because if your mind does not feel it needs to hold on to all this information to remind you that next day, it can then let it go. And why? Because you wrote it down on a piece of paper. You read all the things that you have to go over. Bonus points if you can actually write out your schedule for the day and put in when you're going to get all those things done. And then you can go over and do your five minutes of meditation, focus on your breathing or your stretching. Those two things, absolutely fantastic. If those don't work, if they're not enough, then you can get into uh, nutritional-based supplementation to get you into calming down your mind like um, magnesium and phosphatidylserine and all those awesome, excellent, really great products that um, have a track record for just getting fantastic success. But do the lifestyle-based things first, and then after that, you can move on to the supplementation. Jason, I hope that answered your question. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for your questions today. I'll be back real soon on another Cabral House Call. As a thank you for tuning in today, I wanted to share with you the number one system my private clients in Boston and now all over the United States are using to lose weight, decrease bloating, improve digestion, eliminate skin issues, and increase their energy all day long. It's called the Dr. Cabral Detox, and without going into all the details right now, simply go to drcabraldetox.com, and you can find out how my proven, simple seven-day system can help you lose weight and feel great. 
There's no hype, there's no marketing, and best of all, it's guaranteed or your money back. And as a thank you for being a listener of the Cabral Concepts, I'd like to offer you $10 off your next 7, 14, or 21-day Dr. Cabral Detox purchase in the month of March. Simply enter the savings code MARCH10, all in lowercase, one word, when checking out. Thank you again for tuning in, and I look forward to hearing your success story soon.